Welcome back to another episode of It's All Been Trekked Before, this time, The Apple. We're going back to the, you know, the Garden of Eden. You've seen the episode, you know, they drive that home. When you decide to get away from me, and, hey, come down to Mad Lab this weekend. It's the latest, the greatest IABD radio hour. Little cereals, it, come see your favorites. Top Notch Tangler, Universe Journey, which some people think is kind of like Star Trek. Uh, uh, check out Packer and Rackliff, they could be there. It could be Daniel Kravitz. Funny commercials, it's a good time. Mad Lab Theater, 5.30 on the 11th of November. Another way to, to help us out, to, to really support us even more, go to patreon.com slash IABD. Help us out, help us so we can help you. Support us so we can do even more of the stuff you love. Go there and, and you get cool member benefits. Hear things before other people see them. Hear things that other people may never hear. It might just be for you. Uh, but please, patreon.com slash IBD. Also want to thank our editors here on this all been track before, David Huff and Ando Schaefer. And now, let's go back to the garden, or whatever planet this is, for the apple on It's All Been Trekked Before. Welcome out to another episode of It's All Been Trekked Before here on the IABD Presents Network. Most of your regular hosts, or what's become the season two regular lineup, is here. <laughs> This is Steven. No, uh, this is Keith. I have nothing in my mouth right now. <laughs> and I'm Colleen. Hey. And Jimmy Jerome is still here. Hey. <clears throat> and we just watched episode five, The Apple. Interesting title. I'm curious what it's about. Did you guys understand the, the reference? <clears throat> <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It gets beaten in like real real fast like real, yeah. even the cold open ends with with uh, Kirk saying what is it, something paradise must have looked like this or whatever the hell you know fade yeah. out or I can't recall it ever being so obviously beaten in your head on it, any of these other episodes yeah it, I mean some of them are obvious but I mean we watched an episode called this side of paradise <laughs> yeah and they never mentioned it I don't think maybe once in the episode maybe but uh <sighs> Similarly themed episode in a way, but this episode goes a different direction. But this was so... Yeah, they beat you over the head with the Garden of Eden references. And then at the end, just in case you didn't get it, we're going to tell you at the end. I would still say that it's probably a sign of the times and that things probably didn't... They didn't feel the need to be as subtle back then. They probably didn't... I mean, I'm not saying that right. I feel like people probably wouldn't have been as jaded about those types of references then. I thought it was very interesting because one of the things that I do know, which are limited when it comes to Star Trek, is that Gene Roddenberry refused to use the word God Mm -hmm. in Star Trek. So it it was very strange to me that he based an entire episode on a Christian story. And they even reference Satan at the end, but they dance all around (laughs) Ball being God, a three-letter deity with a a vowel in the middle. That's a good point. I was was really surprised that's where he went. Well, and there was one reference to... In an earlier episode, I can't remember if it was to God. It wasn't maybe it wasn't God, but it was something essentially I having mean, one they, one deity or whatever. Right? Yeah, I mean, at Star Trek Five, they go meet God. So and Roddenberry was still alive. When oh, they who mourns for Adonis? That's right. I right, think. who mourns for Adonis? They talked about a god or yeah. Greek gods. Uh, um, the Adonis is like, yeah, there used to be all these gods. Kirk's like, we found that one's enough for us. It's like, yeah, Roddenberry, bring it down a little. All of his not wanting to get into religion actually talked about God a lot there. Yeah. He released, because he used to do speaking tours, and they released um, some of his speaking with the Star Trek The Motion Picture soundtrack, and the one thing that really stands out to me about that uh, when I listen to it is he, to demonstrate what television censorship is like, he talks about the Bible if it was adapted for television. So clearly he's, that's something he still thinks about and compares things to, even mm-hmm. if he doesn't uh, necessarily want our, the characters to talk about God. Well, my, my take on what I've heard just now, it seems mm-hmm. like the spirit of what he's trying to do is probably try to uh, point out the flaws in mm. Christian religion. And so it's not, it's not like he's outright saying, I will never mention God. What he's saying is, I will never uh, glorify the belief in God. And like all, all the mentions have a way to try to uh, point out like this... The character of God in this story was the, the villain. This is someone who's it's trapping true. the village. It's fair and so point. They, they came by, and he's actually pointing out, saying that uh, <clears throat> what Satan did with the apple was actually freed Adam and Eve, in essence. 
That's true. From the, the tyranny of a god. Of course, but. that's some total American centric. Our way is the best. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, absolutely. That too, but that's uh, he's also pointing out the disconnect uh, for. Christian Christianity being like the main religion of this country, and since we have that kind of our way is the best way, why would we be following some sort of path that is meant to entrap us in yeah. these, these rules? But whatever. <laughs> if Val wasn't a snake and looked like it was a white guy, old white guy with a beard, hmm. could he have been the bad guy? <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, that's, that's why he's being clever that's, right that's there. A like, look, look, actually, you know, if you think about it, the, the, the heavy handed pointing out of things is sort of like a misdirection. Yeah, it's, so, uh, it's an extent. Oh, yeah. look at this. I'm, I'm telling you a Bible story, but wait a minute. So Then it ends with them disparaging Spock, saying mm-hmm. he looks like Satan. Which, uh, uh, <laughs> thank you. And yeah. I, you know, I like a lot of the other philosophical argument, conversations, arguments they get into in the episode, uh, I think are, are really good. Um, and I like that they take those detours for a couple minutes and stop the action or whatever to have those conversations. I think they're interesting and Spots are logical and actually make sense. Mm-hmm. Um, and I almost feel like that's what Roddenberry thought made sense, even though at the end of the episode we have to wrap it. You know, we have to get out of here or whatever. But I, so at the end they decide, you know, and, and Kirk does his usual, hey, we got these, you know, they're arguing, well, they, they're humans. They need to, the, whatever. They need to make choices and blah, blah, blah. And, and Spock makes the, the valid point of, hey, they're happy. They're healthy. Here's my question, and I guess this is one of my older episodes, is how did the Vol thing, how did Vol take power or become what it is Mm -hmm. and what were those people before because did he create them i mean they're humanoid somebody had a man and a woman or a humanoid and a humanoid had to get together and make them that's uh, that's something i i I noted there i said something about uh was kind of disappointed and really get more to the the replacement process yeah there are a lot of unanswered questions they kind of skirted around we don't even know if they have genitalia they know we don't know if they have reproductive they could be like barbie dolls we don't know yeah and nobody checked. I mean, they weren't. Gonna, they weren't going to discuss sex on here. Even Spock, for they had, no apparent reason, skirts around and gets uncomfortable. And which I don't believe Spock would get uncomfortable discussing it. It's a that's a funny little scene, yeah. but yeah, I I think he would. I wish they'd have just written it and he just got all clinical on it. But yeah, yeah. that'd have been even funnier. But well, right. he doesn't ever discuss it. The first episode of this season is all about his sex life, and he right. doesn't discuss it. But that's, that's very his private. Sex life. That's, that's his, his sex life, life. <laughs> not their sex life. <laughs> I mean, and I think we've seen him be like, oh, I'm not going to tell you anything about me, but I know everything about you. Yeah, I, mean, I mean, plenty of people will t- talk about anybody's sex life, but yes. it's not their own. But their own, right. He's supposed to be, you know... I'm not one of those people. Log- <laughs> logical. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> logical and mostly unfeeling. That should be a very scientific discussion. It should be like, well, this is what it is. And yeah. Yeah. Right. So, Especially when you're talking reproduction for the scientific sake yes. instead of romance, because clearly they had no concept of romance. Well, and, and it, it's that, and so I'm like, I feel like, you know, and maybe we missed some scenes where they studied them in the tricorder and figured out that they kind of <laughs> reproduce and all that. But but where did they come from? I mean, were they made like androids? Like, and where? I mean, mm-hmm. devout make them? At, do we know that they're actually humans? I think more. They well, were organic because McCoy. Oh, that's them. right. You're right. Yeah. So I mean, and they have the modesty to cover up the naughty bits. That this is true, <laughs> but so do Barbie doll and Barbie. I mean, I feel like if this wasn't network television in the '60s, they really should have all been naked. Absolutely, and bronze everywhere. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah, and um, so yeah, I, I just think there's a lot of and Kirk does say, "With our help, we're going to help you figure this out." That was so patronizing. Yeah, it was. Um, yeah, which again and they didn't sounds help, like they left. Yeah, they did. <laughs> I guess, yeah, it's like Wrath of Khan. They come back and these guys are really... P- they left him a playboy and they... They really p- Kirk. Uh, yeah, it's so like a- McCoy's line about, oh, machine can't tell them how to reproduce them like he doesn't know it, about the internet, yeah. clearly. There's plenty of YouTube clips or <laughs> not even YouTube... Pornhub. Red There's two. plenty of places. Yeah. Swords that hasn't come up yet. In this We've race. only read about these things. We don't know. I saw it hurt. So it hurt. I've only read about them in medical journals. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's how I learned Colleen, as you can tell. Just, yeah, you just keep going. <laughs> you don't want to talk about it? No, um, but uh, my other thing with Kirk's speech at the end about you might find it's fun to, to grow crops and whatever he's talking about, blah, 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 and, and make your own food, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, God. easy to say for a guy who just pushes two buttons and gets yeah. whatever well, meal he wants. And the one line that I thought was really strange is that, like, Val puts fruit on the trees. He's like, you'll find it's not too hard yeah, to put fruit too, on yeah, the trees. Yeah, that's, that's what he I'm said. I'm like, wait, wait, 
What? <laughs> what? You, you pick fruit off the trees. You don't put it on the trees. Yeah, I, don't, I don't think he even understands the basic part. I think part. you're right. Kirk, Kirk's like, oh, yeah, yeah. You replicate it, then you just stick it on the tree. I just said, no one does know about, and everyone on the Enterprise knows about, or fruit flies, because that's all they wanted to talk about in this episode were flies. They didn't even call them space flies. They were just flies. And Scotty's like, oh, we can't even beam up a fly. And I'm like, first of all, first of all, I would think beaming up a fly would be rather complicated. I think you're right. It's just so tiny and trying to get a lock right. on it and all that. Right. Yeah, it wouldn't but, stand still. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> second of all, yeah, I'm not even going to go second of all. All right, so uh, about that, that, that's part of the other thing I was worried about, or not worried, but... Uh, concerned about was mm-hmm. they never did they ever even really confirm how the fruit was growing? I mean, could it have just been a natural process? Was the was this right? The yeah, that's another that's another answer, unanswered question. Yeah, uh, you know, why are there bombs? Why are there all kinds of things? Were, yeah, were these parts of the defense system that he was? Operating I mean, he seemed in some to way, control or? the weather, so yes, I assume yes. that he also controlled the plants. But mm-hmm. I feel like in an idyllic setting, the reproduction of the plants would be a natural habitat kind of thing. I don't yeah. I don't feel like they don't they don't have to farm. They just have to keep doing what they're doing and sure. mm-hmm. yeah, the trees I mean, are gonna keep producing. He fruit. was maintaining right. the temperature on the whole planet in some way. So I don't know we don't, I guess we don't know what the actual what it would return to. But right. that should and be easy was, to figure he, out. He was blocking right. the harmful rays of the sun and he was doing right. all of Oh he was things. doing all that? I thought it was That's their a, atmosphere. Maybe, yeah, yeah they're all gonna it die sounded mel- like he was controlling the atmosphere to do that. They'll all be dead from yeah. melanoma within seventy eight years. <laughs> and well, how come they don't get killed by the the killer flowers and the yeah. exploding rice? Because right. he controls. Oh, that's right. Because he mm. controls. The, I, that was my understanding. Was he controlled the weather? So he controlled the flowers. That's why the flowers turned You're shot right. specifically right. at You're people, right. but never at the. That's a good point. The people that fed him. The rocks were what they were feeding him, though, right? Yeah. Oh, was it? Oh, I thought yeah. they were feeding him yeah. fruit. And I will say, I've seen this episode probably four or five times. And this is the first time I actually realized what they were feeding him. Oh. In the past, the I thought, rocks. I kept thinking they were feeding him food for some yeah, reason. Yeah, me too. I, and I then this is the first time. Yeah. No, it was the it was the rocks. This is the first time I noticed. Oh, well, okay, that makes so sense. So there's though. again, I was watching on a giant screen, high def, instead of a 15 inch black and white. So you know, if we really want to do this podcast right, we need, we need to do a 15 inch black and white. <laughs> John we're, Coon, we're, we're VHS copies. John Coon broke mine. Otherwise, I would have been provided. So how are the? I mean, the, the, that's like a vicious cycle. Now, how are, the, how are these things being produced? I mean, if right. it needs them to feed them the feed the rocks right. to him, where are they coming from? How's it? Right. Being, is it the is it just like the part of the habitat itself? It's, I, there's a lot to to learn about. A lot to unpack. Pre yeah. this, yeah. Somebody should write a book. <laughs> or we could just uh, email Max Ehrlich, the, oh, uh, the writer of the episode. Is he still with us? He is. He's oh. 73 years old. Oh, oh, no, I lied. He died in 1983 at age 73. <laughs> ah. So we can get a Ouija board and ask okay. him, though. I know or Celeste Jarnell. And Gino Coon's credited with the teleplay alongside of him. Oh, okay. Which is makes he still me wonder us? why this wasn't better. Yeah. No, Gino Coon died a long, long time ago. <laughs> you know, it, overall, I would say I didn't hate this episode. I No. I really right. thought coming in, I, my, in my memory, I was like, oh, I'm dreading this. But I, yeah. I didn't hate it. But there's obviously some... Oh, yeah, no, I agree. I mean, tons of logic problems, but I, yeah. I still found it enjoyable. Mm-hmm. Although I don't think we're going to talk about the enjoyable part so much. I think we're going to keep talking about all the problems that happened. <laughs> uh, well, but to say, it's not a season three level episode. It's not. No, by no means. I mean, like I said, I, I thought the arguments and the conversations and the, mm-hmm. the non-interference directive they talk about and that stuff. Which they barely mentioned. I mean, if the Prime Directive had been fully established, which it was in Star Trek history, right. but not in the show, mm-hmm. yeah. they would not have done it, well, interfered and, with them at all. But I did like the conversation of, should we interfere? They, they talked right. about the actual principle of that actually discussing it specifically um, I, I was so I thinking about that, that. I, I, like, I would think that I wouldn't have done that I mean I feel like I would have just done enough to escape the planet that's said, what, that's what guys, I think yeah. right, we, we're, you can come out of your hut we're just we're taking off yeah or Look. maybe send some team back that yeah. knows a little bit more and can have their stuff together and and maybe that's what they do right after he established communications and everything uh-huh. what, I, what I was thinking because he, he mentioned send an engineering team down with equipment I was like why are you not just leaving? What, right. Why did you not just learn your lesson? Like, this is it. Let's just go. Well, and, and that's a good point yeah. because we, Kirk spends a lot of the episode like, I should have seen this coming. Why did I screw this up? Da, da, da. It's, and, and it seems belabored a little bit to me just because, and I mean, I, they keep coming back to it. I like the scene where Spock, and McCoy almost looks at, looks at Spock like, you need to go talk to him. And Spock goes over to give him the, mm-hmm. it's Spock. okay. Logically, you did the right thing. Blah blah blah. blah. And I, I 
kind of like that that moment. Then it gets interrupted by. There's nothing remember. you could have done. Yeah. It, yeah, there is. But. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, because it doesn't matter. Because later he still says, "Oh no, I'm letting 400 people die." And I, I just yeah. want him, of course, to be like, "Oh, what a drama queen! Come on, <laughs> enough already." <laughs> I mean, Kirk was a drama queen the whole time. He was. And then, like, From the get go. Scotty, you're, you're fired. You're the best. After he says, you know, you're the best. You're the, the only person that can save us. If you don't save us, you're fired. I've always liked that line. Is this the only episode funny. he fires yeah, like, uh-huh. I feel like he had uh-huh. things in our time. I don't know. But I don't maybe, remember. I always like that line, actually. It sounds like a running joke they do or something. That's, I, laughed, I think it happens. It, I, I like it. Yeah. I, or, I mean, like, off screen, it's like an in joke they have that we were being let in. Right. And yeah. Like, oh, you're going to be fired. Yeah. Um, some things. Well, all right. Uh, the Chekhov thing at the beginning, I I realized later that that, that maybe they were actually involved with each other or something before that. Because I, I wrote down, quote unquote, good Chekhov is barely better than evil Sulu. Yeah. In the sense of like, oh, you better worry about me. <laughs> Talking uh, about Yeoman Martha yeah. Landon, played by Celeste Yarnell. Yeah. Yarnell. <laughs> And this is what she's best known for in IVD this episode. Uh, she also was in Elvis movie, which I think a lot of the the Star Trek women were. Um, it was Love a Little, Live a Little, Love, Love a, little. a Little, and that's the one that has a little less conversation, a little more action. That makes that's sense. It. The song they redid, yeah, <laughs> um, yeah. So that was her other big thing. Yeah, Chekhov was kind of lecherous. And, yeah, like from the and get-go, she could do better than him. Yeah. From the get go, oh, he's I all over. Disagree. Really? <laughs> Young Chekhov is so much cuter yeah. than everyone. He's that's, precious. That's mm. fair. I mean, he was supposed to be in there for sex symbol, the monkeys, the popularity. Oh, right. He's adorable. Yeah. Yeah, so well, and I think this is the first episode he without the wig is what I read. Mm. That's his own hair. He finally got shaggy enough. Yeah, yeah. And then, uh, well, right off the bat, there's a scene where Kirk's talking to Enterprise, and they're in the back, and he, they're arm in arm, and I'm like, okay, I'm like. Oh, that's a little bit of fraternization. Then they're just open. They're like, hey, let me talk to you, blah, blah, blah. And I I guess we've talked about this before. I guess if people are getting married in the Enterprise and everything else, yeah. I guess... Well, well check out's getting action. Yeah. I, just, I, I guess it's okay, but I feel like, you know, there's some other stuff going on here. I, I would have been far less appalled if I had noticed that they were at least touching or something before that moment. It just seemed right. like out of nowhere, like a co-worker, like, hey, <laughs> yeah, I'm going to get you down here forever. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell? Are you talking about the first time or when they get alone? Uh, the, no, first the first time. time. Okay, that's, yeah, I, I was the same way. I was like, yeah, I didn't know. Wow, that's creepy. very like the first time because yeah. I didn't notice they were. Don't worry, I'll take yeah. care of you. Uh, I'm good. But, yeah, <laughs> yeah. But then the other time, yeah, they, when they taught the aliens about sex, yeah, the Valians. Uh, or something, or just kissing. <laughs> I guess <laughs> what seemed to happen. Uh, while we're on the fashion, fashion. What did you think, Colleen, of the Valian fashion? I was all ready to be upset about how the women were wearing the skimpy little bikini mm-hmm. tops, and then I realized the men were topless, and I was yeah. okay with it. So, yeah. yeah, they literally wore burlap sacks, and they all made it look good. Do you- Conveniently, they're all very skinny, yes, well muscled, yeah. attractive yeah, they, people. They look good. Um, there was some for everybody, as they would be in this society. <laughs> sure. The yeah, they're getting all that exercise, and... picking up rocks all day, um, <laughs> not falling off cliffs. <laughs> Eating, but they're vegetarians, clearly. They don't even know how to kill a person. Yeah. It's a shame all those pretty or people in, together and they couldn't even have sex. The wigs were bad, but... Well, that's why I said, yeah. What, the, we, well, I like the, the 60s. I like the burlap bikinis. They were cute. I wasn't mad at the burlap. The wigs what were bad. What about the, uh, the... The face paint? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it would, like Keith pointed out, it would make a very easy cosplay. Yes. This <laughs> yeah, would, this Just would. a ton of bronzer and some face paint. You're going to go. If you had the body to pull it off. <laughs> yes. I would not cosplay that. I'll get in shape. Well, it I mean, would still be funny. Hey, we can still do that for Halloween, but no, only Star Trek people are going to know what the hell we're It's going to be right. too cold up here. Don't we think gotta, we're, uh, don't think we we're gotta trolled move off. I do my hair like that. that and... like, uh, like they do. Yeah, um, troll dolls. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, well, Colleen and Steven specifically could pull it off. <laughs> yeah, well, thank you very much. We're not thank quite you. that blonde, but I appreciate <laughs> it. <laughs> we could. Work. Close enough. Yeah. Sometimes my hair looks that crisp in the morning, like it, looks that, <laughs> like it could set on fire, like a, like a tumbleweed. I um, did oh. think it was interesting that they basically treated the men and women equally in that society until it was time to kill somebody. Yes, mm. and then That's, all of a sudden, women go away. I had that same. Guys thought. are going to do it. <laughs> the men were going to meet and kill. The the men that cry if you punch them and. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's what the snakes said to do. Well, I guess, yeah, I guess that's what, that's the information Val had been fed into his computer banks was men killed. Into his Frankenstein women. bowling tennis? Yeah, yeah. I, I just, what the, I can't curse, but come on, Kirk, like. 
<laughs> this guy has just been uh, quietly watching you. He has posed no real threat, and yeah. the first thing you do is punch, punch him, him in the face That's and then tell him, we come in peace, I'm not yeah. here to well, hurt you. Yeah. And, yeah. and contrast that, that with... Yeah. Move. <laughs> yeah. So his first move is somebody he can get his hands on punch. Pow! But with the ship, it takes him until the 58th minute or whatever, until the two minutes left of the episode. Oh, oh, hey, we know where the power source is. We have phasers. Why don't we shoot the energy source? Like, that's why. Why did you come up with that 45 minutes ago? I mean, they said, Scotty made the point that they their phasers weren't strong enough to get through the field. So that's uh, probably okay. why they didn't waste the power until it was the energy. Weekend. All right. Until Fair. they could cut off the food supply Fair and enough. keep the recharge. Right. Uh, well, um, so I bought that. But right, why they didn't, you. like, talk it through earlier, I don't right. know. Yeah. And. Yeah, Val was just really vulnerable once you just cut off that food supply. It's like, oh, it's all over now. Well, and so did somebody pro? Again, I'm getting back into the yeah. how did Val yeah. come to be? Yeah. But yeah. Well, we who don't programmed know. him. We don't know. I was he a robot? We don't know. We, we never don't know. exactly. Him. That is another strange. They thing. assume he's a machine, Lots but who's to say that he is? It's a good point. Mm-hmm. Maybe he was sending a being that made himself into a machine. He could have been a little glowing light down there, like ET's finger. We don't know what he was. They never showed yeah. him. This could have been one of those sloppy writing type things where they're just like the, the writer knows what it is and just mm-hmm. the, the characters just somehow leap to the correct conclusion. Yeah. I mean, he magically. was the god of their people, and so who's it, to say he was a robot? And I'll say, I kind of like that we can have a conversation about, well, how did this happen to me? I mean, I, that's, I'm okay with leaving that open. I <laughs> yeah. think that's interesting. Um, oh, while we're on fashion, <laughs> before we leave fashion, uh, the volumes, and then. Uh, Oh, so uh, what was the what was Chekhov's lady's name? Yeoman Landon. Yeah, Martha Landon. She is wearing uh, Janice Rand's uniform, uh, Grace Lee Whitney's actual oh, uniform. Really? Mm. And she was really worried about. It. She's like, well, well, I don't know if I should do this. And Bill, Bill Tease told her, uh, sh- trust me, she's not coming back. Don't worry. Because it, it would have been Yeoman Rand in the script. Ooh. Yeah, probably. yeah, it probably was. So. Well, I, I thought, and I don't know if he knew for sure she wasn't coming back, but that's what he told her. The last costume thing I thought was kind of interesting is Shatner looks for any excuse to rip a shirt or have his shirt off. Uh-huh. Spock gets his shirt like fried open, and there's no skin, <laughs> nothing <laughs> visible. Like there's clearly another shirt underneath it. Like he's not going to show a bit. The difference between Nimoy and Shatner, right there. And and Spock took a beating. Spock got beat up this episode. Spores, lightning, and what was the other thing? Uh, Oh, oh, the force field. He had the force field. Oh, okay. and, but McCoy gave him the potion. The mm-hmm. potion. And it upset his stomach. He's like, well, what would upset your stomach if you're human? And I'm like, but you know you have an alien in the way right. team. You don't have something to treat him? Uh, I mean, I mean, it on. works on him. It's just like, well, sorry, man. You're the minority, so you get the upset stomach. <laughs> yeah, but I kind of feel like as the chief medical physician, he should serve the minority, too. He should. There are it's... other aliens in Starfleet. It worked. It just didn't work as well as it would on the human, which was mm. nine out of the ten people. That my theory, uh, yeah. to that end, though, my theory is he could make a Vulcan human concoction that still wouldn't bother humans because, like, screw it. Spock yeah, can deal exactly. with that stuff. Yeah, I don't exactly. want to do that extra. Well, then he clearly had more stuff on the ship because he was like, we got to get him back to the true. ship. That's I've true. done all I can do That's here. That's a fair point. He only has so many pockets. That's true. Which is... However many pockets he has is that many more pockets than the women have. That's guaranteed. <laughs> True. Uh, yes, I think you're right. And I'm done with fashion. <laughs> uh, I, Are we still in fashion? One more fashion, one more pseudo fashion. Uh, Akuda's a ten eye. Yeah, the Frank symbols. Do you think those are into his, like, the the cord? Band, I mean, they the, were the brainstem. Uh, I guess that's what they're because I feel to be. like he was getting direct messages. Yeah, yeah, like literally. And he somehow. said Val gave them to him, but yeah. how? Does Val right. have hands? That's that's mm. the other. That's a good. Uh-oh. That's a good question. <laughs> that was my other thought. Was yeah. is Akuda just trying to run things? Is he, is he really getting these messages? But my other thought was uh, in the episode of Seinfeld where Kramer says, "In the future, you're not even gonna have to talk. You're just gonna." Think something, boom! It's gonna get sent to that other person. <laughs> so I think that's how those antennas work. I wish you work. guys could see Wu's doing Kramer's face because <laughs> it was funny. I I can't remember what Seinfeld episode. I was, was pretty convinced that he was actually getting messages of some. Story. I think he was, but yeah. But that still yeah. raises the questions of if he can't even if he doesn't even have the the hands to feed himself rocks. Mm-hmm. How are these things created? How are these systems put in right, place? Right. Right. Yeah. Uh, How are replacements made? They, keep, they obviously know right. that there are replacements. Mm-hmm. Right, and if, you know, and again, I think McCoy says we don't know if they're, they're 20 years old or 20,000. Mm-hmm. So if they're 20,000, 
Though I really liked that these people didn't have a word for children or a word for love because so many times the aliens are so similar to humans. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that was like yeah. a major difference right away. You're like, okay, these are not just people. That was one of, one of my other notes was it was, I liked that we got to meet a group of people that mm -hmm. were different. They were still humanoid, but it, you know, when, when they went to meet the Organganians or all these other people, other than the Gorn and a couple of the other ones, we haven't met really... We haven't landed on a planet and met a bunch of people that are different. Right. I feel like. I know that um, they were refreshingly naive yet eloquent. Yeah, they were yeah. kind of like, children. Yeah, yeah. But it's... They, they, they hadn't learned sin yet. And I, I thought it was funny they were like, well, we're, I thought the first thing Kirk asked when he's like, well, where's everyone else? I thought it was saying, how come there's only 15 of you? But he meant, where are the kids? I thought that was weird. That was the first thing he thought of. But... Well, uh, yeah, I think it would be weird. Captain. I think it would be weird to walk into a village and there's no children. Yeah, it makes that, sense. That, I mean, every village he's visited has children. But at first, I thought, yeah, what do you mean? There's only 15 people. That's all you ever see on every planet you go to. A bunch of your people, right? Right. But that makes sense. Yeah, it's too bad they clearly had to do this one on soundstage instead of outside. Yeah. Because yeah. it would have been so much prettier if they'd done it outside. <laughs> uh, but, uh, <laughs> I, I mean, I like the way that they were able to to at least. I mean, they, they were able to speak through, uh, to think through and question through things in an adult-like mm -hmm. manner, yeah. even though the concepts didn't exist for them. They were still kind of yeah. Yeah. A able to communicate it with each other. Oh, yeah. It's like this thing. Well, they weren't dumb. Yeah. I mean, I did have the thought that, well, right. you know, and, you know, oh, it's good they speak English, but that's, that's <laughs> fine. I don't have a problem with that. Universal translator. So, yeah, that's what I thought, too. That's what I would Build in the, the Starfleet. Yeah. Universal translator. So there's one, uh, one other vaguely... Fashion related thing that I had was the, which were the wrist corsages. Uh, uh, they're uh, the lays for your hand. Yeah. My thought was, I felt like they, they were making such a point, such a point of it was going to end up being something else like uh, the, the marriage trope, like, oh, we're, mm. we're married now. Oh, yeah. Or maybe some sort of protection from the force field or the, or uh, the, the rocks or something. That's, uh, that's a maybe good point. Maybe their tracking, tracking devices could have been all kinds of things, but they just, eh, whatever. And then Kirk so just flips it off. They all take, yeah, the men will take them off yeah. as soon as they got it. Yeah. Yeah. But of course, Yeoman kept her. She only had one flower. Landon kept her. Marco yeah, she Landon. got a flower in the hair. Was she yeah. a yeoman? Is that yeoman Marco yeoman. Landon. Yeah. Yes. yeah, the women's flowers were in their hair. The men's were in their hair. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, those guys. The, the Valiants. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, I also like the salute that... I liked the salute. <laughs> yeah. yeah, they all did it. The whole Yeah, village. I thought that was a little different. Yeah. I like that. Mm -hmm. so. I mean, it kind of makes a V. Yeah, they did it. Oh, it was like part way down. Oh, yeah. I like that. Yeah. I thought it was interesting in most of these episodes, Kirk maybe once might like talk about if he's lost crewman. Oh, that's so sad. But this one, like every death, they were like, oh my God, we just lost that crewman. <laughs> that, oh, we know him. Oh my God, that one died. I, they lost oh. so many right yeah. off the bat. Yeah. My reaction was, at what point does Starfleet go like Kirk? Man. <laughs> WTF. Like, <laughs> he only loses red-shirted men. Well, yeah. that's fair, but it's like What's well, all the red-shirted men were dead when you everybody else was saying? I'm just gonna well, spoil no, alert. one of the guys made it. He did. Spoiler um, alert for upcoming episodes, but there are some captains that lose entire starships. So yeah. Kirk's actually that well, he's top like, of the food chain. <laughs> Kirk, yeah, he seemed kind of sad when the when the single men well, died. But then it was like the ship was in trouble. He was like four hundred people. I was like three have already died, and you were like, well, <laughs> let's go eat some fruit. <laughs> <laughs> well, see, I think they gave those red shirt deaths more weight here than in yeah. other episodes. They, they did. probably have. And I thought I, I thought ca the captain one was kind of a bummer because he's like. His dad got me to the cabin. Yeah, like, oh, that's what I'm saying. That's so a good backstory. Save that so, where we can right. spend 10 minutes on or something right. or do something with it later. But I know this is back then. We won't ever hear about Kaplan again. But uh, my one of my other alternate episodes was... Um, uh, How Kirk got his position. No, everybody loves Hendorf. Because everybody yes. has something nice to say about, oh, it's a shame about Hendorf. Oh, what about Hendorf? The... Uh, Landon did, Scotty did, Kirk was upset about it, everyone was upset about Hendorf. Right? It, yeah. So uh, it's, it's everybody loves Hendorf, it's just what a great guy he was and all the parties he threw and how, how great he was before he died. So, yeah. And he has a brother who's really tall. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes, yes, and his brother lives with their parents on Seti Oh, I just, God, I just got that. <laughs> yeah. Um, Which is right across the street from his planet. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, and it's great for like the first nine episodes, and then you've seen them all. <laughs> um, I'm not sure. I, I've noticed a couple of things that, that may, may or may not have been like firsts. Mm -hmm. Like this felt like the first time we really saw like a a good old just 
uh, insta kill for a red shirt, uh-huh. just bam, oh. and then they started going down the line. I read this shirts. was this is where it really starts. Yeah, they then, start. Oh yeah, clearly. And then then uh, McCoy just right away he's dead. Yeah, one of those. Oh, uh, feels, feels like the first. We'll need some kind of count, like a some kind of rolling count of dead red. Or security a, guards the rest of the way. It has been zero days. Without <laughs> <laughs> How many episodes? Yeah, it's been, it's been zero episodes without a red shirt. I bet you make a good prop for this. One. <laughs> that uh, is not awesome. If you idea. remember to do it, <laughs> we'll start right now at zero. <laughs> <laughs> and there's there's the the ensign or whoever answers that that call every time. Yep. What? Ah, uh, we were up to two and a half days. <laughs> I was gonna get to use the three. All right. <laughs> Zero days since our last work accident. And I'm not sure if they've mentioned impulse power before this as well. I think uh, they, have. they have. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. What was the the antimatter pod? pod? I missed when they talked about it first. I heard it was down, but I was like, I don't know what that is. Whatever what it does. Val was doing was draining that. But what? what I mean, the engine, that's what helps the run engine the... works by combining matter yeah. and antimatter oh, and okay. the lithium crystals. Yeah. So like, they, he, their engine was broken. <laughs> yes. In simple yes. methods. Yes. Terms. yes. Okay. <laughs> Something was draining the battery, more or less. Right. They, cool. they left the oh. they left the dome light on. I like that they overnight on the Enterprise. They mentioned in this episode, and this was part of the original Roddenberry design in the Enterprise that never happened in the original yeah. series. Is we can jettison the the, the cells, cells yep. and the saucer the section, the yep. main section can leave. Yep. Wow. They yep. mentioned that I, in this I episode. Catch that. I love it. It's, talking it's about almost mentioned in that. passing, almost. Yeah. So, yeah. And they just never had the budget to do it until no. next gen. Yeah. But obviously, next gen we see it a number of times. Well, in the movies too, didn't they? I mean, not in the original series movies. No. Huh. They never never uh, in, separated. Uh, beyond though, right? Isn't beyond? In beyond, they did. Yes. Yeah. yeah. The new movies. I love everything they do with the main yeah. part of the bit, the ship in that one. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, besides the heavy handedness on the Apple and the Eden and all that, I felt like they spent a lot of time recapping and reminding us who everybody was and what they did. Like, Scotty, you're the chief engineer that knows everything. And you, you, you do all of this. And I wrote down, Kirk keeps reminding Scotty of things Scotty already knows. Right. It's like, he knows. Scotty, you only have 45 minutes. I know. I'm the one who told you. Yes. <laughs> I'm going to have it done in half an hour. I'm the one who's going to die, you jack. And let's make sure to remind you that Chekhov's Russian again. Obviously. And everything you know, forgot. Uh, Eden was right outside of Moscow. <laughs> and Spock, they have to talk about his green blood. They have to talk about the logical. Like, I felt like they were just recapping who everybody is and what they do. That's actually very interesting. because I, I was thinking something about that earlier today because uh, one of your uh, family members, I suppose, was commenting oh, on yeah. your thread about inviting people who haven't really watched Star Trek before. And the way the original series seems to be structured is is in such a way that they don't expect people to have been keeping up in a serialized way. So it's like a a good soap opera where you can jump in at any point. Right. These were days before reruns and VCRs. So so. they kind of had to. But yeah, you're right. I guess that's another way you can have an actor play three different people (laughs) over 40 episodes. You just like, yeah, you've forgotten or, oh, that's cool. I don't even recognize them in the episode because first time I watched mm-hmm. well I also thought it just instead of it being to benefit the explanation of Scotty's character I thought it was to benefit the explanation of Kirk's character in that he's such a pompous <laughs> poop head that he's like Scotty here's everything you already know Scotty do this Scotty do that and Scotty's like dude I know I got this <laughs> yeah. I'm drawing like, like your boss coming over you like uh, you know this has to be done but yeah. Did I already tell you it would be yeah. done? Uh, yeah. I'm working on it. Go yeah. away. Yeah. I thought go it was, away. I'm working. I thought it was much more Kirk trying to assert his... That, 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 that We have the whole, like, Scotty, we sense. can't do it. Find a way. Yeah. No, I think I will. I'm just starting <laughs> to give it up. Uh, I'm going to let the, the 400 people die. Scotty, you need to think outside the box. <laughs> <laughs> do that, maybe. Uh, we talked about this in your PMW. <laughs> oh, my God. Because after he fired Scotty, he then gave him, like, seven more orders. And Scotty was like, I'm doing it. I'm on it. Like, Scotty knew he was not fired. It was I would have loved it if he, just Kirk the next time he calls Scotty, because Scotty's like, I don't know what's going on. I'm my I'm my quarters. You right. fired me. <laughs> right. Or Scotty's in a shuttle. Scotty's in a shuttle. <laughs> I wonder if that's why the new movie they did fire Scotty. Oh, you're right. Like it was it into darkness? Uh, Were they fired Scotty? I think so. And I'm like, oh, now I'm thinking, was that a callback to the original series? Yeah, where Kirk's so. like, you're fired. Only this time Scotty actually left. Yeah, in my mind, the original series, I felt like that happened more than once. But I, I maybe it just always stuck in my brain that I love that. That exchange. I thought it was a cute bit. Yeah. Oh, it is cute, but yeah. Didn't take it Especially because it didn't face Scotty, but he was just like, got it. 
Yeah. yeah. <laughs> You're fired. Okay, back to work. <laughs> <laughs> well, I do like the other moment for Scotty when he's talking about, oh, I'd love to be with some green grass. <laughs> <laughs> Get back to work. <laughs> I will say, Scotty was in command again, which he is was. usually great to see. Yeah. But in this case, when your problem's engineering and mechanicalness, put Sulu in the captain's yep. chair. Get yep. down the engineering. Yep. <laughs> They're like, oh, we don't have Sulu and Hura this week. Yep, Sorry. No Sulu and Hura. Yeah. Mm. That was I mean, Hura was probably down in the engine room. Sure. She was probably the one fixing it. Or she was under her panel, you know, waist <laughs> right. deep into it. Yeah. They, they never shot that way. Right. Yeah, because Spocky was... Spocky? Uh, Scotty was even over at the the science officers. Right. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I mean, Scotty should be doing engineering crap, yeah. not commanding. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and he did end up down there, didn't he? I saw the guys in I the weird red think so. geese. Like way late, though. Yeah, yeah but yeah, I mean, yeah. he did end up Eventually. down there, right? Okay. I just want to make sure I was in the yeah, correct place so. on the ship. I okay. think so. Yeah, I just, it just wasn't the right time to leave him in the captain's chair. <laughs> I think my favorite line of his this whole episode was when he said, we got away a little. <laughs> <laughs> that was good. He did follow that up with, we might have bought another hour. So he knew exactly what it was. It was just a bit. cheeky little line. <laughs> <laughs> we got away a little. <laughs> there was a lot of Scotty time this episode. Scotty shown. Yeah. yeah. Shown oh, yeah. And episode. so did uh, Chekhov. Mm-hmm. Oh, before we abandoned Landon. Uh, hey, that rhymed. Um <laughs> She gets some great action. Some she beats the oh, crap yeah. out of those. Oh, yeah, that high yeah. kick to the face was amazing. Yeah. That was great because we, we, we get so we rarely that, yeah. the Yeoman gets kicked butt. Yeah, she yeah. was great. I think I think Noel might have been the last one to beat people. Like well, Uhura, of course. Well, Uhura, obviously. But, yeah. But yeah, but, yeah, she she you know for not doing much up until then, other than worrying about Hendorf and mm-hmm. trying to get some. So, yeah, <laughs> or not get some. All right, already check off. Maybe if I kiss him. <laughs> uh, yeah. Eventually. Uh, did Kirk say there goes paradise after the after Marple or Mallory gets killed by the, so. the landmine or whatever? Yeah. Then paradise they kept saying. Lost. Then they kept saying without Val, this I, would be paradise. I'm like, yeah, except for the killer flowers and the. Oh, that's right. That's right. Yeah. And, the, and I thought I thought like Keith, I thought somebody was gonna say paradise lost. Yeah. I thought somebody was gonna say it's like. That was the one time, like, hey, let's lay off the, the, all these references. <laughs> I mean, I thought they were going to say, now they ate the apple of knowledge. Oh. Yeah. oh. But yeah, around that time. And it, it is a weird material that, that feeds Val that mm-hmm. just kind of sits out in the open. Yeah. Like, and we like, step on like cow walk. patties, yeah. It's like, like, like <laughs> Speaking of which, uh, I felt like, the, I don't know, that it seemed, seemed to be symptomatic of the, like the... All the, all the assumptions they were making mm-hmm. so quickly, like Spock just picked up half a rock, broke it in half, and just kind of tossed it and something blew up. So I was like, oh, it must have been the rock. He broke it down and said it had good cleavage. Yeah. He's getting it all the science, and he's like, oh, clearly it's unstable. And Spock had a bunch of great little mm-hmm. deadpan funny lines in this episode. No, yeah, I think I would have thought it just like hit a landmine yes. or something. That was, oh, that's yeah. the thing Kirk <laughs> even said. That's, that's my that's point. Is point. Like, oh, that's, that's quite an assumption to, to leap to. It's like, oh, it must have been the rock thing. I mean, he that was a max. Why, like, <laughs> why not just like kind of throw it like down another way and see if that's, you know. Actually, all those things were supposed to be buried at one point way back in the past, but they didn't explain it well enough. So they didn't bury them. They just set them down because they weren't as smart. And that's... <laughs> <laughs> what other notes you got? Uh, I when Kirk saves or Spock saves Kirk from the the spores or whatever, mm-hmm. he saves McCoy too. But nobody even McCoy doesn't thank him. Nizzy, Jim's just like thanks for saving me. Next time you go to save me. Well, the flower has very direct aim. Mm-hmm. But they were both right there. You didn't know. Oh, I thought it was. I thought it was fairly obvious it was aiming at Kirk. Yeah. Uh, the way it was shot. You were probably just more worried about Kirk. <laughs> I prefer bones. He says, damn it, Jim. And I love that. Um, <laughs> he aimed the flower at Kirk, but the lightning at the red shirts. Yes. Mm. But I just, I thought it was so funny. And it goes back to Kirk being so pompous that he's like, don't you ever save my life again? You just yell at me and I save my own life. <laughs> he I was spot, well, a royal jerk face in and this I can't episode. Remember I'm Fox happy to get there. creative with my not swearing. I appreciate it. Because then I don't have to <laughs> Who fix it in editing. I like, but I like, you know, Spock says something there, but I, I would have preferred if Spock said, to be fair, I also saved the doctor. Blah, blah, blah. Oh, I also like the line where. Uh, do you under Do you realize how much Starfleet is invested yes. in you? And, yes. And then he like slurs like, enumer- twenty two thousand two hundred because it was all just twos. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And we never get to hear like, was it credits? Was it dollars? Right. Was it Vulcan currency? Yeah. Like how? I mean, there. I feel like there's a lot of variables that you could get into there as well. 
That we could do a whole twenty minute discussion on how Spock has calculated that money. Hmm. Yeah. And where he might be wrong. But yeah, it was funny that he had an immediate number. I like to think it wasn't the real number. He was just going to fire off something sarcastic. I feel like... Yeah. Considering all the digits after the first one were twos, I feel like either Leonard Nimoy didn't bother learning the number or Spock was just making it up. Because <laughs> that's, 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 that's an easy go-to. Yeah, honestly, like, given, I got a couple numbers out. I'm just going to stick with two now. <laughs> given Spock's character, I feel like maybe not quite yet, but definitely by the movies, 50% chance he's just made it up rather than knows it. <laughs> yeah. Because he knows nobody's going to question it. No. Yeah. And he's, he's got that wicked sense of humor that we don't see too often. Although I think he would have said 120,000 blah 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 to the something power at some point. Yeah. Because 120,000, that seems, doesn't seem like much of an investment. 122,000 billion. Hours. You didn't get there yet. Also, it's the 60s. Hours, yeah. so. well, I was going to say in, in 23rd century dollars. Are you kidding me? With inflation? <laughs> <laughs> it's a bargain. Minimum wage is really yeah. up now. Uh, he's Vulcan. They can underpay him. Clearly. <laughs> as we've learned. Like the racism of the, of the... Those people. The 23rd. Those, <laughs> those people, people. As Kirk refers to the Valiants. <laughs> Keep those people in there. Uh, oh, Kirk. It reminded me immediately of the uh, cave of Forbidden Wonders in Aladdin. Uh, me too. Mm. I was thinking the same thing. <laughs> Forgot about that. Uh, and Which is a tiger out of sand that has the big uh, open mouth and the glowing eyes. <laughs> I don't remember that. Yeah. I, I saw it. But you did? Aladdin? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah, but I only saw it that one time. That's fair. <laughs> I haven't been back. Uh, my one other note is um, David Soul played, um, I don't know the character's name, but the guy who like wanted to kiss. The guy who got to kiss. Makora. Yeah, and uh, he, of course, went on to be Hutch from Starsky and Hutch. Oh. oh. Um, also had the hit song... Don't give up on us, baby. Really? Yep. It was How like number three or number four. Character here. Yeah. So, and then Hutch is his big thing in America, but I and I hadn't looked up David Soul in a while, but he ended up um, he cameoed in the Star Trek movie, and they sang that song actually in the movie. But uh, he ended up having like a second career in Britain where he did a lot of stage work. He's like a very respected oh. stage actor over there. So he ended up moving there. And, we should touch on. And I think the, he's been married five times. We should touch on the main guest star, Keith Andes, who yeah. played Akuda. Yeah. He's famous for the movie Tora, 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 where he played General George C. Marshall, huh. this man Dawson, and then a bunch of other stuff. Nothing that seems real big to me, but yeah, he was the voice of Birdman in Birdman. Okay. In 1967. Huh. Oh. He had a great voice. He looked familiar, too. Yeah, he had a great voice. Too. Yeah. Like the cartoon Birdman? No, that's what I thought when I saw it, but it was 67. Unless there was a... It was the uh, the original 1960s series that the Michael Keaton movie was a reboot of. Oh, is that right? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm just the, thinking grab up. Yeah, was it was the Hanna-Barbera cartoon. Yeah. Oh, it was. Okay. Birdman. Which... I was thinking of the one later where he was in a lo- the Birdman that was a lawyer. Remember that? Yeah, one? Yeah. No, that, that was that was a reference to that. That was Harvey using Birdman. that oh, Harvey Birdman, Harvey that's Birdman okay. attorney at law. Yeah. Okay. That's Love okay. that show. Okay. George yeah. Cole, maybe? Um, yeah, no, that was... The, That's what I was thinking. Yeah, those a couple of those Adult Swim shows, C Lab and Harvey Birdman. Oh, yeah. they use the animation from all the Anna Barbera cartoons. Oh, okay, and, and just, just redid voices. That makes sense. Yeah, <laughs> Birdman and the Galaxy Trio. Hmm. Uh, so I, yeah, I think that's all I got. Keith, anything else? Uh, what was it? The thing? Yeah, I mean, the some of the things we squirt around and kind of joke about. Just like the, I think the perception of. I mean. Uh, the, the times, you know, being written in the 60s, the way mm. that they would imagine things to actually work, they don't really project what they mm. think might, like like the inflation, like 120,000 right. would, right. would have been a lot of money back then. Uh, also, the thing about, like, how they're having that, that cute little thing in the cave where they won't say sex. Right. Yeah. <laughs> like, as if these people that would be that... very that, 60s. Yeah, yes. as if they would be that embarrassed anymore. Right, it's, yeah. It's, uh, eh, I don't know. Especially the fact that she was, uh, yes. what is her name, Landon? Yeah. The fact that she was the one leading the question and being like, but, but seriously, but, <laughs> but I have to know. I mean, again, I don't just think Chekhov was creepy with her. I know she wanted it. She was <laughs> a good Just a minute, she was had a it. sex drive? Was she was in I thought they were going to say the line from the cage about yeah. female urges, isn't that what yeah. they said? Oh, that, wow. uh, the, one, the one girl had? Yeah. So I was waiting for, I thought that's what Landon was going to say. I do think it's oh. funny that in this podcast, we've said the word sex at least 15 times, and I'm still not going to read it explicit. I don't feel like it's a dirty word. No, I don't know. In the 60s, know. you couldn't say even yeah. that word. Yeah. Yeah. That yeah. reminds me. Uh, they couldn't even say reproduction <laughs> in this episode. Oh, and now we can sing it. 
Reproduction. <laughs> Reproduction. Oh, we have the money for Grease too. <laughs> yeah. Music. Keith, you were talking. Yeah, the um, the Valians, I guess we're calling them the, the natives. I've there. decided, yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> the Valencian. No, I don't know. Valians. I can't remember the name of the planet. But. So even though they have. Gamma that. Triangula 6. Valians, it is. <laughs> <laughs> no, the Gamma Triangula 6ers. <laughs> Great basketball team. Their <laughs> So even though they had uh, these rules in place about yeah. fraternization or whatever you yeah. want to call it in that sense, uh, they didn't seem to have a sex drive in the, in the, the sense. I mean, no. It's until they saw it and it was a woman. Right. Even they then, seemed they to were, they like were, each other, but they yeah. didn't. Right. They they, didn't I mean, know. you would think that that uh, they would have to be taught uh, what that was. To, uh, I mean, there should have been some sort of instinct involved with with the closest of touch or something. Yeah. Well, and I guess now now we're talking. Wow, you're talking about stuff in the '60s that. Yeah. Now it could just be easy. Why it couldn't have been two male or female volumes being like, yeah. Yeah. how come we can't experience what's going on over there? Right. But it had to be a man and woman watching a man and woman. Right. Man I like how they just like it looked like fun. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah, you have no idea. So the other part. I'm not going to talk about those. Uh, we should see the real life sack kind of go up a little bit. <laughs> Well, yeah, so the science of it, you were saying before, we don't even know if they have genitals. Right, so we, yeah. They could just be Barbie dolls or any yeah. number of things. And We so. know whatever they have behind that burlap, they don't want to show to other people. Or Val doesn't want them to show. Huh, well, He's so. probably for, forbade that. Mm. Yeah. Whatever's behind there. I got to tell you, I was curious. <laughs> well, I'm only, sure only for the female on the internet. <laughs> and I'm I sure... Anyone listening is suppressed. <laughs> I mean, Zoe's I'm not, not going to spend time. At all. Yeah, Zoe is. She's even like, got it. Uh, yeah, I'm not going to spend time looking, but I bet you could find naked versions of them on the You're internet. You're probably right. You're probably right. Valiant porn. Any other notes? Are we ready to get the rankings? That's all I got. Okay. Um, men, women. Uh, who did I pick from last episode? Or am you I still so have from Marlena? Is that? Oh, that's uh, from last Perks episode. Girl. Uh, Kirk's woman uh, Captain's woman I'm gonna stick with her I was thinking of switching I thought I might switch heading in but I'm sticking with her okay yeah Keith you have uh, Marlena as well I can't even remember at this point <laughs> uh, she's the one with the pretty mirror, butterfly mirror, dress Captain's right? woman yeah the butterfly dress oh the, uh, with the dark hair extra hair yeah the amazing hair the tantalus effect Marlena Moreau there you go. Oh, right, yes. Eh, I'm standing for now. You staying with her? Yeah. Colleen, you have Professor Jackson Roy Kirk. <laughs> but I'm going to switch to Yaman Landon because she can kick butt and she can be confident in her own sexuality, and I like that about her. Nice. 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 Me too. And I like that you like her. <laughs> <laughs> and I am going to go with for some reason the Valiant who discovered sex <laughs> I gotta say that's not a I bad mean, thing I feel like she's got lots of things to work out and yeah. I could volunteer to let her work them out on me I mean she has so many female urges she doesn't even know she has urges that she has right and they're still forcing their, I think their she way could, to the uh, be a lot of fun yeah. once she you know gave it a shot and if David Soul gets handy with her. She can punch him because he'll cry like a baby. And I like to pring, but I just felt like I had to pring too long. So it was time to move on. <laughs> yeah, um, got the wandering eye of the galaxy. You can't keep the same woman for too long on this. <laughs> I thought I was going to change again like this episode, her. but I there were some great guest stars in the 60s, I gotta say. So I feel like I'll mm-hmm. be changing again. This yeah, time. I, I wish I knew like who the actress was that... It might be Sherry Nim, Sianna. I think I'm not it. Sure. I think it's. I think that's who it is. Um, I couldn't I just, find much on her. I just wanted know. to change. Yeah. And so she seemed like a good yeah. mix up for the day. Uh, where are we going to rank the episode? Let's. Is this start, our I fifth mean, episode. Yeah, it's only the fifth. Okay. Um, let's start at the bottom though. I think. Yeah. Uh, better or worse than who mourns for Adonia, Adonis? I so like this better. The, the columns and the Greek gods. Yes. Yeah. Person are in. Um, yeah. I liked it better, too. Yeah. It was more fun. Yeah. Uh, above that is the changeling. Nomad. Yeah. Oh. It's not going to be above the top two, Mirror Mirror and Amok Time. Yeah. I know. Uh, I could probably go either way with that. I think this episode was more fun. The changeling 
had some great ideas, some cool stuff. Mm-hmm. I yeah, I, I, that's tough. Uh, I'm gonna go with it behind the changeling. Behind the changeling. That's kind of what I was leaning towards too. Even though this was more fun yeah. because the changeling was more solidly put together. Yeah. I think. Yeah. Other than some really Professor Jackson Roy Kirk and. <laughs> And kill Scotty, and then he just come. Oh, I fixed him. <laughs> in Uhura. That was yeah. where her mind gets wiped. And yeah, oh. God, now I'm starting to. Re- <laughs> oh man, <laughs> it felt more important, I guess, than the references. The changeling did. Yeah, yeah. Well. there was. Yeah, I think the changeling was as well. Colleen, did you have an opinion on this? I think you've been here for like all five, all, all four of the five. Yeah, I don't remember the Greek god one, but. I liked this one a lot better than you guys did, I think. So, Greek yeah. God, you were not here for that. That's the only one this season. Yeah. I liked this one, for yeah. sure. Yeah, I liked it more than I, than yeah. I thought I'd be going to. Yeah. Okay. So we got our ranking. We got our men, women. We got our conversation. And uh, we will be back in a week. Or a couple of minutes. But a week to do the episode that is next, which is... Good. An interesting is it doomsday episode machine? that I will find here in a second. <laughs> this is getting cut for sure. <laughs> uh, the doomsday machine. Yeah. The USS Enterprise encounters the wrecked USS Constellation and its distraught captain who's determined to stop the giant planning destroying robot ship that killed his crew. So it's Kirk losing right. a few red shirts is not going to seem all that bad. No, he's going to he's going to get a promotion. Or is he going to be up for a promotion, I should say. That's a spoiler alert for way down the road. <laughs> okay. All right. Have so a good week. We're going to go interfere with another planet's and directive teach them about or whatever. Sex. Yes. <laughs> Colleen, you got to come with us. Colleen would teach them about sex. She taught me a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Dude. Did you guys get, did we talk about enough how this was a reference to the Garden of Eden at the, 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 the voice level? <laughs> <laughs>